If you're wanting to know how to do keyword research for a blog, there's a lot of different strategies, but what I've found is one simple technique that just seems to be the quickest and easiest. So I'll kind of show you, it, it's using this tool here, but let's say you have a blog that's all about um, smoke, you know, smokers, like grills that um, smoke salmon and briskets and r lamb and all this stuff. It's gaining in popularity as of late. So let's say you wanted to find some keywords for your blog to talk about this sort of stuff. What I would do is come over to this tool, SEMrush. If you're not familiar, this is like an SEO tool, which I'll leave a link below where you can get signed up and try this tool out. But it's going to allow us to do some research and figure out what keywords exist online in this niche. However, if you just take a keyword, pop it into the search bar and hit go, it's going to just give you a whole bunch of different information that is sort of hard to consume, if you will. So what I find works better is if you take some of our top competitors in this niche, which I happen to know who a couple of those are, one of them being Green Mountain Grills, and this is their blog. So what I've done is I've just taken their blog and I put their blog into this tool here. And now it's going to show me how many organic keywords or their organic search traffic, um, backlinks, a whole bunch of different stuff. If you just open this right here, it's actually going to show you all of the organic keywords, all 2.3 thousand keywords that they have, and what blog posts they're ranking for when it was last updated, the keyword difficulty, the search volume, so much helpful information. Now, if you just were to try to go through all 2,400 pages here, it would be pretty difficult to tell what exactly is going on. And these are kind of all over the place. Like potato skin is green. Uh, you know, that potato skins is really what they're trying to rank for. So some of these terms are not going to be the best. <laughs> so, there's some ways to filter these down. The first thing I would do is come up to uh, the KD right here, which is keyword difficulty. And you can start selecting some of these ranges that are more possible to rank for. Poor man's burnt ends. <laughs> Chuck roast burnt ends. So now we're starting to see some terms where people are actually searching for like how to how to cook certain things and they seem to be creating recipes more or less showing people how to actually make this type of meat so you can see there's a picture of it here and then they go through the whole process explaining how to actually make it using a smoker from green mountain grills right so that's the first set of of terms you can take a look at. You could also go down to these terms that are a little easier. These are probably going to be a bit more broad. And then you can also search by volume as well within the keyword difficulty. So the more difficult the keyword is, the you know the harder it is going to be to rank for that term in terms of SEO, most likely. Uh, but if you find a term that has lower keyword difficulty, has, you know, maybe like a couple hundred searches a month, then there's a higher chance that you're going to be able to rank for that term. Might be able to find them easier going this direction. So we can see here there's like all these terms with between a thousand and, you know, a few hundred searches a month that would all be really good opportunities to look at, see if we can create some content that's superior to what's already ranking and get some traffic coming in. Now you can also export this so we could go ahead and just export this information and save it for later and be able to come back and create blogs that are superior to our competitors. Now not every company is going to have their entire blog on a subdomain like this. If they do it's going to be easy to to check SEMrush and see exactly what's going on. But there is this other company that's probably even more popular called Traeger. And they do grills as well. And uh, smokers, barbecue smokers, etc. 
And if we plug their website into here, we can go check out the organic search traffic, which you'll see is substantially larger, 2.3 million. So if we open this page up, then we'll see they actually have three, over 350,000 keywords that they're ranking for, leading to 2.1 million visitors to their site each month, roughly. From that, it's going to be a mix of a whole bunch of stuff in here. You can see there's going to be like recipes and dealers and they're going to have products that they're selling, grill types and categories and there's all sorts of different sauces, all sorts of different types of pages that are in here. And we need to kind of filter through some of this to be able to better see what they're actually doing with their blog. So I'm seeing a few things that stand out. Recipes, learn, those are the first two that seem like they're probably going to be blogs because you see their URL and then there's a forward slash and then this would be a page, recipes, and then there's another forward slash and then you have what the, what the post is about. And then you see the same thing here with learn, you got the same thing going on. So what you can do is come in here to advanced filters and switch this to URLs containing forward slash learn and click apply. Now that's going to filter out everything to those URLs that contain learn. And we can see this looks like a blog, how to cook how long to cook a turkey, Thanksgiving sides, how to cook Wagyu, grilling pork chops, safe meat internal temperatures. Yeah, so now we've found essentially all their blog posts and that has dropped it down to 123,000 keywords and only half a million visitors a month in traffic. Then we can search again or sort again by keyword difficulty. So we'll go by like possible to start with here. And again, searching by volume, we can start to see smoked baby back ribs, smoked pork butt, how to reverse sear a steak, all sorts of amazing keywords that we could rank for that are going to be related to selling barbecue grills and smokers and all the stuff in this niche. But the reason we're doing it this way, at least the reason I like to do it this way, is because if these companies have ranked for these terms, put all this effort into doing this, it, it means it's probably working for them, especially if these things have been updated recently, right? Rather than try and re uh, reinvent the wheel, <laughs> I find it works better to go see what's working already and then reverse engineer that into something better. So you can figure out like, if you're trying to create a burnt ends recipe, you can go see what this one looks like. Take a look, see how good theirs is, make something that's even better. And next thing you know, you'll be outranking them and getting some traffic coming in, right? That's the whole idea here. So I hope you found this helpful in terms of finding keywords for your blog. If there's anything you did have questions about, don't hesitate to reach out. You can just drop your questions in the comment section below and I'll be sure to get back to them there. If you're like most new business owners, you're probably struggling to get your online presence established, let alone get it to the point where it's bringing you a consistent flow of customers, right? <laughs> so that's why I created this free course where I actually walk you step by step through the whole process of setting up your online presence. This is the same process we've been using for our clients for over a decade in one of my agencies. And essentially, I'm going to show you how to set up an SEO friendly business name right from the get go, how to develop your website really quickly and easily, how to set up your Google Maps listing, start getting some Google reviews, everything you need in order to have a substantial online presence where people can actually start finding you and, and purchasing your products or services. <laughs> the best part is I'm going to show you how to do it in under a couple of hours and all for less than 50 bucks. 
If you're interested, I'll leave a link below where you can get signed up today. Make sure to check this course out for free right now because I'm probably going to start charging for this at some point in the future. All right, I'll see you on the other side.